So, um, so uh, I'm very happy to be here at Metcalf Institute after so many years. Uh, I did my PhD here in Rhode Island, so uh, with sunshine. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, my talk today is on the impact of marine heat waves in the tropical and South Atlantic. Um, um, so often marine heat waves are associated with other extreme events which exacerbate their impacts. Uh, they can be linked to droughts and heat waves over land. We've seen a, a little bit of this already in uh, Dr. Dylan's um, uh, talk. These are called compound extreme events and their combined impact on both terrestrial and marine ecosystem can have massive social economic uh, consequence. So, but before I show some of the, the impact, let me explain how marine heat waves are generated in the Western South Atlantic. Uh, just uh, see if you, yeah, uh, my pointer here. Um, uh, we first noticed a massive event from December uh, 2013 to March 2014, which is, by the way, summer in Southern Hemisphere. Uh, uh, this panel displayed the deviation from the mean sea surface temperature for 2013-14. And uh, in order to, in other words, positive values in red uh, show regions where the ocean temperatures uh, are warmer and uh, negative values in blue show uh, regions where the, the, the temperature are, are cooler. Uh, during this event, uh, ocean temperatures reach up to three degrees Celsius above average. This is a lot for, for the ocean. And when we started to investigate this marine heat wave event, we, we noticed that air temperature over land uh, was also um, uh, very uh, warmer than normal. So at the same time, Southeast South America, this region here, uh, experienced one of its worst uh, droughts. So we found that, that the, they were all linked to the South American monsoon system. So let, let me briefly explain how the South American monsoon system works. Uh, the wet season is characterized by the establishment of the South Atlantic Convergent Zone uh, during summer which is this band of, uh, of um, uh, strong precipitation associated with a clockwise circulation or, or low pressure system here over Eastern South America that channels the, the, the moisture from, from the Amazon to, to Eastern South America. And the presence of clouds over the Western South Atlantic keep the ocean surface cool because prevents the um, uh, the sun's, sun's ra radiation from reaching the ocean's surface. So we have this low pressure center, uh, rain and clouds, and then uh, the cool ocean. So, uh, but during the summer of 2013-14, however, a persistent anti-clockwise circulation uh, established over Eastern South America, preventing the development of the South Atlantic Convergence Zone and its associated rainfall. So the clouds were deviated to the south and the lack of clouds in this region here uh, uh, um, over, uh, allowed the sun's radiation then reach the surface and, and warm the ocean. So then when you, you know, in this situation, we had a high pressure system and cyclonic, no rain, no cloud cover, warm ocean. So here I show the rain, uh, uh, rainfall data uh, on the left. Uh, the mean rainfall during the typical summer. The values are in millimeters per day. Uh, just to give a sense, 10 millimeters per, per day uh, in the, this dark green areas over Amazon is equivalent to uh, a total of uh, 500 inches during the summer. Uh, this pan panel in the left therefore highlights um, the presence of uh, the convergence zone characterized by this band of rain from the Amazon to the Western South Atlantic, as I said before. And on the right, I show the deviations from the mean precipitation for the summer of 2013-14 for comparison with the negative values uh, in brown shades highlighting the deficient rain uh, fall over most of Southeast South America and the Western uh, South Atlantic. 
So, and now uh, here I show side by side the deviations from the mean uh, uh, for the summer of 2013-14. On the left, the, the precipitation and on the right, the temperature. And then you can see the drought is collocated with the land and marine heat wave. So over land, the drought and the heat wave affect the terrestrial ecosystem and agriculture. This region is responsible for more than a third of the world's coffee and soybean production and is the world's largest sugar produ uh, producer. Um, uh, and, and, and the marine heat wave affected marine ecosystem and fisheries. Uh, and here, FOX and the impacts of marine heat wave, the 2000 13-14 event caused a decline in the production of this species of clam. Uh, very important, important economically where I live uh, in this uh, star here, uh, 27 uh, South is an island. And this was, uh, uh, um, uh, this, this decline in 2013-14 was followed uh, by an even bigger drop in, in 2015 and 16 of this species. And finally, it uh, was totally decimated in 2017 as a consequence of a consecutive summers with various uh, marine heat wave events. So this region is also the biggest producer of oyster, uh, supplying 90% of the market in Brazil. They are cultivated in these shallow uh, waters uh, between, uh, along the bay between the island and the, the mainland and are greatly affected by extreme temperature. Under extreme temperatures, oysters do not reach commercial size uh, since they use most of their energy to try to cool down. Extreme temperatures lead also to the development of uh, vibros or pathogenic microorganisms, increasing the risk of infections when consumed by humans. So I put it together, uh, this diagram to summarize the effects of the, the, this compound event. Um, the 2013-14 event that involved drought, heat wave and marine heat wave led to water and power shortages in Southeast Brazil, a, re a region that is heavily populated, home to more than 80 million people and uh, responsible for 6% of the uh, uh, Brazil gross domestic product. It also reduced the Brazil soy, coffee and sugarcane production, impact food supplies globally, increasing worldwide prices. It decreased the production of oyster and the catch of some commercial important fish species while decimating clams uh, along the southern coast of Brazil as I show before. This event affected also human health uh, by increasing the risk of a heat stroke and vector-borne disease. In addition, compound events uh, like this have a disastrous impact on ecosystem degradation and loss of land and, and marine biodiversity as, as we've seen uh, uh, in another talks. So we're now changing a little bit for the tropical Atlantic. We are also studying a sequence of a very strong marine heat wave events that occurred during our strong summer of 2019-20 in the tropical Atlantic. And these panels uh, show the cumulative intensity of uh, these events for each month, um, which can be understand, understood as a measurement of uh, cumulative strength for each month of these uh, marine heat waves. And we can see that uh, the extreme temperatures were widespread uh, from uh, January to April, uh, January, February, March, and April here. And as a consequence of marine heat wave, an unprecedented coral bleaching event occurred off the Northeast coast of Brazil. Uh, its location is shown here uh, with this star. And uh, coral bleaching is the process, uh, probably you, you might have heard about, but it's the process uh, when corals become white due to various stressor, in this case, temperature, but could be light or nutrients. Uh, bleaching occurs when corals expel the algae that live inside the e e e tissue, causing the coral to turn white. And uh, there was a, a steep decline of uh, health uh, corals from January to April and um, an increase on bleach the coral at this location. Up to 95% of, uh, of, uh, of the coral uh, uh, were bleached by April uh, um, 2020. 
So here I have a, 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 a short video uh, of this, this massive coral bleaching that was produced by my colleagues from the local university. Uh, the subtitles are in Portuguese, but I can translate uh, what it says. So I'm not too sure if you're going to hear this, the, mu the, the, the background music, but anyways, the image is, what is important. So the Brazil coast also has coral reefs. This is their normal colors. But in March 2020, something went wrong. Corals started to bleach off the northeast coast of Brazil. This was the result of uh, uh, the marine heat wave. The algae that live within the corals died. Several coral reefs around the world are bleaching. And in some of the reefs of the Brazilian coast, from 80 to 100% of the corals bleach during this event. If it lasts longer, the bleaching can lead to the death of the coral. Compromise the survival of several species that depend on the corals affecting tourism, fishing, and the ability of the reefs to protect the coast from storms. The Brazilian coral reefs are usually, usually more resilient to bleaching, but during 2020, they, they struggle. So, um, so uh, back to the 2013-14 uh, uh, event in the Western South Atlantic, uh, when I think about uh, that event, the Brazilian media gave a lot of attention to the effects of overland, as you can see here in, in, in these uh, headlines of uh, lots of new papers in Brazil, obviously in Portuguese, uh, but you can get the idea. Uh, and as expected, we humans live on land, and indeed they, this event caused water and food and power shortage in Brazil. So it was really uh, uh, with a lot of impacts on the land for us. Uh, but it, it is a challenge to bring uh, the ocean side of climate emergency to public attention. There is a misconception that marine ecosystem uh, are more resilient and the, uh, the capability of uh, regeneration of uh, the ocean is great uh, simply because the oceans are enormous. However, uh, in my opinion, biological rich areas, well, not my opinion, but <laughs> biological rich areas represent a small fraction uh, of uh, the ocean. And uh, the solution to this disconnect is to link the consequence of marine heat wave to people's experience that goes beyond the higher prices of clam or oyster for consumers. I'm sure journalists are better equipped than us scientists to tell the story and make it personal. And just to, the, to finish up, uh, in the island we, uh, where I live, both species of clam and oyster are part of uh, the cultural heritage, uh, tourism and, and culinary. Uh, during the carnival, there is a, a block part named after the clam. Uh, you can see here in the left, uh, in the, in the, um, um, right uh, panels uh, in these photos, uh, and and it comes from the historical uh, tradition of uh, of the immigrants from Azores. Uh, there is also a, a oyster festival, um, I, as you can see here. So basically, it, it goes beyond the the the, the just the the rise of of the price or. or it is it's part of the, 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 the economy, but also the, the culture uh, of the people. So that's it. Sorry, I just uh, don't want to take more time. And this is the people that work with me that I should uh, thank.